Don, on, on inspections of the of the political stuff, wasn't there a given period of time that before the TV stations went online and during their current license cycle that they would need to keep that information, the written copy of it? Oh, yes, yes. And, and a still, as I mentioned, radio and TV both should still keep paper copies of all this at least through this next license renewal, so that you ensure you have the documentation if somebody shows up on the doorstep and there is a connection problem between them viewing it online and the uh, FCC. So the Sinclair Group, and they, they are keeping everything, yeah. not just political, but they are keeping everything still as a hard copy. Yeah. And part of their request to me while I was there was to not only look at what was online, but to look at their written copies as well. It's not required, but it was one of their corporate requirements that they keep a hard copy of everything. That, that is not a problem. I mean, the, the, the commission never specified what you need to do as backup. But now we all know we're looking at it online right now. And I guarantee you while we're watching this, there are a thousand people out there trying to take down that site. We all know that. That's just real life. If that site goes down and all your documentation is gone, you're in, trouble. you're in trouble if you don't have a copy somewhere. So whether it's a paper copy or it's a copy of all the PDFs that you uploaded to the site, you should have a copy. I do go in and caution stations, you know, have backups, have backups, whether it's paper or PDF. And I actually had uh, last inspection I did, uh, I got granted uh, access to their backup site uh, in their server so that we could look and be sure all the documents were there. That's just a given. Again, technically not part of the inspection, but that's something you want to do as a courtesy for that station. And Because we're out here training people and trying to help people, and that would be the last thing you want to disagree, uh, I mean you want to have is not have a backup. All right. More public files. I, you know, I don't understand why they just call this more public files because you look down this list right now, and what do you see? Right over here by issues and programs, there's 31 of them. To me, that seems like a pretty important file to me just to be kind of stuck down there in the back. And of course, we know that this particular file is really one of the most important on the FCC's website. We're going to get down to it, but we're going to go through everything. Citizens' agreements. Anybody know what citizens' agreements are? Anybody have any citizens' agreements? Have seen any? Well, this goes back years ago, back into late 60s, early 70s. You could really file against the license renewal was every three years. And if you didn't like a radio station or a TV station, you could file against them in a heartbeat. Yeah, and a lot of times... It may have been just for the programming. Uh, maybe somebody didn't like the fact uh, that you didn't do a specific type of programming, maybe for the Greek community, for example, or, or Korean community in your particular market. We'll just pull two out of the hat. Well, they filed against your station, so you did a citizen's agreement, and you set up, and maybe you agreed to run X number of hours or, or do some type of specialized programming for the next six years or whatever the case was that you agreed to and the commission granted your license but you that became part of that public file that's what the citizens agreements for i don't think i've seen a citizens agreement now in years they're very very rare but they're still there donor list now this is applicable to non-commercial stations and this is for donors who give support money to specific programs. Not generic programs, but specific programs. You have to keep that list. So if it's for Daryl and all things considered, for example, and Joe Smith comes in and gives a $10,000 check, his name's going to be on this list. So, and that, and that you need to keep updated at all times. And I'll probably embarrass myself, but I think they keep this list updated here. Do it at the end of the month when they do the billing. When they do the billing, they generate a spreadsheet. Let's see here. And I'll put it up. There we go. 
All right, there's the name of the business. There's the show that they sponsored. And that pretty much takes it back the past few years. They don't have a lot of sponsors. It sounds similar to underwriting. A it is underwriting, yeah, it's underwriting. But remember, uh, in, in the real world, it is under, underwriting. I mean, the commission calls it donor list. And we call it all, every one of them are right. Right. Because <laughs> we don't want to put names on them. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the way it's done. But anyway, that, uh, that is your uh, donor list, per se. Now, the next thing we're looking at is FCC investigations or complaints. You don't want them. Everybody has probably had one of these at one time or another. Have you gotten an email or it will actually be a written letter from the commission and your station was listed and they wanted a report on EEO for a certain period of time? Everybody gets those. If you have them, your, your time's coming. But usually twice a year. You want better than that. Okay. Station uh, here in the state, they, uh, a gentleman was tasked with paying the, the fees. And apparently he didn't pay the fees. Well, how to get him there? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and they got a letter from the lady up there that we call the Bulldog. Yeah. <laughs> Told him to say, hey, you will cease and desist operation. <laughs> cut it off yep and you will maintain the top of cells until you dismantle the top of yep that's what it. they called me hey man we got a problem mm -hmm. I, said, I said what's wrong well apparently this and i said i said you pay your fees well so and so both but well, you better call him and say they pay the fee he didn't pay the fees and then they put that big so i had fee. to call john Godzilla to get him to go ahead and get in there and hey man we need to get this done and Oh, it, it can be oh, bad. Let's say but they was in a pickle right there for a minute. It can be bad. Can well, be bad. the FCC investigations or complaints is primarily dealing with EEO investigations that they do on an annual or semi-annual basis where X number of lists of uh, stations in every state in the country has to file a report. That's where you would see that information there. It can also be about programming. Uh, TV's had issues over the years as well as radio, but uh, I've gone into a lot of TV stations and oh, a number of years back, you know, for some unknown reason, people didn't like the halftime show at the Super Bowl game. So, you know, all those complaints got filed in that particular folder and licenses got held up. So that's what that particular folder is for. Information on third party fundraising. This is new. This is for non-commercial stations only. Non-commercial stations could only raise money for their particular uh, radio or TV facility. But let's say Hurricane Michael, the non-coms wanted to raise funds, whether it's for Red Cross or their own organizations, to help people who lost housing and, and everything in Hurricane Michael. But under the old rules, you couldn't do that if you were a non-com station. So now you can do that, but you have to post all the information at that particular file. Issues and programs. This is the fun one. Now, anybody in this room here of any station, or maybe they were one of the stations that got an email from the commission saying we couldn't find any quarterly issues and programs in your online public file? I hope nobody's hand goes up. Well, in November, and I believe again in March, I think it was March, February or March, the commission went through all the available online public files for radio. Television was free and clear on this one. And they went in and they checked to see if there were documents in the online public file. And specifically, issues and programs list. Now, we don't know how detailed they dug down, we suspect that they may have just gone in, and if you were supposed to have 24 or 31, whatever the magic number was, files in there, and they checked and there were folders, they went on. But if you were missing that number or you didn't have anything, you got, yeah, you got a letter. Now, they've been more than willing to work with you and help you out. Uh, 
I mean, I know some people that had issues and they call the commission and they had people that they could talk to up there. So they really want everybody to be up to date and on the online public file because when license renewal time comes around, that's what they're going to be looking at. Now, you will see as an inspector and maybe in your own operation, oops, now I know that, oh, I hit the third, let me go back. Uh, as an inspector, you're going to be uh, looking at online public files and you're going to see all kinds of documentation. While I would like to say it is our job to determine what should be and should be, we're not legal people. We're not attorneys. We don't work for the commission. We are inspectors. So our job is to be sure that they have a report in there. Now, I look at the reports. This is USC's report. And of course, right there are community issues addressed. You always have to have community issues of some type. Uh, they may uh, not necessarily be things you're used to. This is, this is a college, and these are issues that they feel as important to the community as the college students see it. So they may be some different things than what you would normally see there. I'm not sure personally that I would consider uh, community events an issue, unless maybe they didn't like the groups that were playing at the Russell House or something like that, but health and public safety, government and politics, economics, international relations, and gender issues and inclusion are all legit issues. Then you want to go down and you can glance and see how they address those. And of course, here's gender uh, related uh, the date, the time, the length of the show, the discussion of what they did. This, this is information that they published in response to the issue, gender issues and inclusion. And this, while the form may not be identical to what you do, this is pretty accurate in what's necessary to be done. It's hard for a music station, for example, or a TV station that is running MeTV to do a lot of public affairs programming. There may not be those programs available, so you have to go out of your way to consider the type of programming you do. But as inspectors, we don't get into really determining. We might advise, I mean, you could certainly say uh, you might want to consider adding additional information, but again, that is a conversation to be had between the broadcast facility and their legal counsel. Any questions so far on this? Now, you may walk into a station and they have PSAs listed. While I think PSAs are important, that can't be your whole quarterly issues and programs. I mean, I've seen some TV stations that have news script listed. I mean, good Lord, I saw a paper document file for one quarter. It must have been a foot thick. I'm not sure that's in relationship. Uh, again, that goes back to legal counsel, and if there are questions there, we just want to be sure that there are documents there and there are issues there. Now, let's see if we can get back to where I need to be. Ah, good. Now, the other thing you want to look at, too, is you want to be sure, going in an inspector, that they have quarterly issues and programs for the whole time. Obviously, four quarters for each year, that's fine. Now, you look at 2011, and there were two listed, and that was because of license renewal. So they listed, they, they included the last two quarters of that year their license was granting uh, I think it was in November, I believe it was, if I remember correctly. So they more than covered that aspect of it. Question so far? Everybody's got this down. That's good. Well. Now the site's being slow. Barely even get 
today deadline for something? <laughs> Must be. Well, okay, here we go. Y'all just going to have to quit looking at Facebook while we're doing this, and that'll give me some more bandwidth. All right. Now, some of the other things we're going to look at here. Uh, next thing is uh, joint sales agreements. Uh, JSAs were made famous years ago as a way of one station to work with another station, and they would combine sales teams, and even though they had separate ownership, the sales teams worked as one and they divvied up the dollars accordingly. Uh, so if there are joint sales agreements, they would be in that particular folder. You don't see a lot of those right now because the commission frowned on them some time back and there were a lot of questions. Uh, uh, it was more among the TV corporations than it was the radio side of it, but well, that went away. And we're doing something. They must be. Well, let's try going back to the beginning again. Ah, we got back in it. Almost. I know. Now we wait. Side is than the, uh, side. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, the joint sales agreements, we'll get back into this in just a minute. The joint sales agreements uh, were set up for stations that uh, utilized uh, a common staff and worked between, you know, two radio stations as such. The next thing, oh, we got in. Now let's see if I can take it one more step down. Okay. All right, the next thing is lo uh, local public notice announcements. Everybody know what these are? This has to do with your license renewal. So for stations, for example, in South Carolina, we start in June running announcements at specific dates and times announcing that we're filing for renewal of our license and if you have any question comments to make about this you would contact the Federal Communications Commission then once those announcements have run you put a copy of the script along with the schedule that they ran and uh, uh, a uh, copy of the sales order or however you set it up in your system and it goes under local public notice announcements. Once your license has been filed, then you run more local notice announcements after the fact, notifying the general public that they can comment on that license filing by contacting the FCC. So all that documentation would reside in local public notice announcements until your license had been granted. Yes. What's the latest on um, actually publishing in the local fish wrappers? That's gone by the wayside. So yeah. even though the rule still is still showing on the yeah. web page. Yeah, I don't know of anybody that's now publishing in the newspaper. Oh, a lot of places don't have newspapers anymore. Yeah. So we put it on yeah. our website and we do our ad. Yeah, and, and I, I think that's fine. Again, I would look under advice of your council just to determine how they do it. But but this this is what we're going to be looking for right here. Yes, sir. You have, oh, I thought I'm sorry. you're saying post approval, you've got your new license, you can yank it. Yeah, once it's done. I mean, with any application or any construction permit, once you've get, been granted a license, you can remove it from the website. That's right. You got your, your free pass. Political matters and controversial issues disclosures. This is another one of those crossovers from back in the political files. Uh, so let's say, for example, uh, Alabama's going to legalize marijuana, and this is a big brouhaha. You've got the Marijuana Growers Association saying it's helpful. You've got, you know, <coughs> other private groups that saying it's going to kill you and the world's going to end, and everybody's buying time on radio and television. Okay, that's where that information goes. And 
Occasionally you'll see stuff there, a lot of times you don't. But as an inspector, you just have to ask. Time brokerage agreements. This is kind of a gotcha. Uh, it's kind of like an LMA, but it's not. But let's say the local high school football team comes to you and say, we want to buy time on your station to carry our games. Now, your small mom and pop and first thought was, heck, I'll just charge a couple hundred dollars or whatever it is an hour, and I'll go my merry way. Life is good, and I got money, and I don't have to work for it. Let them do all the play-by-play -play and everything. So easy income. Well, you got to have a time brokerage agreement because what's going to happen, they're going to take that time that's in that football game, and they're going to sell those spots. They're going to pay you a fee for it, but they're going to keep the rest of the money from those spots, so that's time brokerage. Uh, it used to be quite famous. I don't know if they still do it a lot, probably more in rural areas than anything else, but on Sundays you'd get gospel groups that would come in. I worked for an urban station for about 12 or 13 years, and on Sunday morning we did gospel shows from three different funeral homes, and they all paid the money up front, and then they went out and sold time. The groups would sell time to local businesses in the community and that kind of thing. Those were time brokerage agreements. If uh, Birmingham, for example, um, well, let's say Auburn, good example. They don't have an affiliate in downtown Birmingham because everybody up here is doing the Alabama games. They might go to a radio station and pay them to carry the Auburn games. I'm sorry? Okay, all right. That's a time brokerage agreement. So those are the kind of things you're looking at under time brokerage agreements. Any questions? So is that like a contract or? Yeah, it's a contract. Oh yeah, it's a bona fide so you have con a con a copy of that contract in right there. That's correct. Now you don't necessarily have to have the dollar amounts and stuff like that. That's that can uh, be blacked out, but that agreement has to be there because it is a legitimate agreement. So who's liable if something bad happens during that time? Who's the licensee of the radio or TV station? So you have to watch them. That's right. And That's if right. They do something bad, you got to cut them off. That's exactly right. Okay. That's what they Yeah. I mean, would you run any kind of event live today with a crowd of three or four thousand people or three or four hundred and not have a delay on your station? You'd be surprised. Oh, I know. <laughs> but I mean, think about it. I mean, how many times, you know, is the guy in front of the play-by-play uh, uh, -play announcer at the local high school when some infraction occurs and he jumps up and he lets it fly and there's no delay back. Of course, the guy operating the button at the delay is probably asleep anyway if he's even there. So. But, I mean, those are things you, you are, the licensee is always ultimately responsible Seems for what goes on there. Anyway. Well, if it's after 9 o'clock at night, you probably can. <laughs> We have Janet Jackson to thank for most of this. Yes, exactly. So, anyway, questions so far in the public file? Now, let's see. Is that true with video delay, too, I guess, huh? Oh, any of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There we go. This is, this is a fun one. Now, you're not going to see anything here because there hasn't been anything... Uh, uploaded recently, but let's see, let's look right here older. And this is where the commission can really check up on you. Yeah, if you get to hit the dates. Yep. Here are all the dates right here. And the times. Oh, just in time on that one. I've had some yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, but this is where license renewal is going to nail a lot of people. Because in license renewal, while we haven't seen the forms yet, there's always been a statement that you have to certify that all the forms and documents have been placed in the public file in a timely manner, according to FCC rules and regulations. There's a violation on that page. Which one is this one? 2013 Q2. Uh, on the 15th oh. instead of the 10th. Well, but now look at the date, 2013. How did it say 2018? That all had to be in the FCC files by uh, 1st of March, 2018. 
was this was when it was all uploaded. Oh, that's when we that was, that's when it was all uploaded. uploaded. I didn't even pay attention. That's all right. That was when it was uploaded. Yeah. So, but no, that's good because this is what the commission's going to look at. But here's a couple of things, and you might have this question posed to you. Okay, 7 9 2018, 11 40 a.m. On, on that report. So suddenly you realize you made a mistake in that report and you need to update it. What do you do? You load it the second time and put an explanation in there with the second one because if you go in and change this, there's no guarantee that that's going to show the original date. It won't because it was the last upload and it would look like you didn't load it until whenever you caught the error. Yeah. Now, Where do you put the explanation on the front page of the IP report? Yeah. Now, here's something else, and this, this, when you go in and start looking at people's public files, people put stuff in the wrong place. I mean, this was confusing to a lot of people when you first started working on it. And I've seen, I was at a station about three or four months ago where they had a whole year's worth or quarterly issues and programs were stuck up in other documents under the license folder. I don't know how they got there or what. Now, they were filed properly when they were supposed to be, but they were in the wrong place. Now, if they move those documents, it's going to redate every one of those. So the recommendation, and again, back to legal counsel a little bit, recommendation was put a note right in the beginning of that folder that they were placed in such and such location in error. That folder is still active and available for viewing this was to correct the location of those and then put it in the appropriate folder. It will show a current date on it, which means it's out of date, but you can go back to that original and still see that date. So that's a way you can help your station that you're inspecting if, that, if you find that kind of information. But you certainly don't want them to move it and not update that information and document it because then you're in trouble. And, and it's just the technology of it is what it is. When you go back to one of the IP reports, on the right side, when you go into one of the IPs, does that move command still over there? You have to be, you'd have to be in the I don't know that, I, I, I'm not, yeah, I have to be in the admin side. It, it's still there, but I don't know if it works If it works or not. And I'm not going to advise somebody to try using it I'm and then it screws them up. I, I don't know either. I don't want to be a guinea pig. Yeah, exactly. So, questions on the online public file. All right, y'all want to take a quick break, stretch your legs here, and then we'll go into the last few segment of public files and legal documents. Maybe much less. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. We'll say five minutes or so if you need to check email and that kind of thing.